أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ياسين والقرآن الحكيم إنك لمن المرسلين على صراط مستقيم تنجيز العزيز الرحيم لتنذر قوما ما أنذر آبا وهم فهم غافلون لقد حق القول على أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إنا جعلنا في عناقهم أغلالا فهي إلى الأذقان فهم مكمهون وجعلنا من بين أيديهم سدا ومن خلفهم سدا فأغشيناهم فهم لا يبصرون وسواء عليهم أنذرتهم أم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون إنما تنذر من اتبع الذكرى وخشي الرحمن بالغيب فبشره بمغفرة وأجر كريم إنا نحن نهي الموتى ونكتب ما قدموا وآثارهم وكل شيء أحصيناه في إمام مبين وضرب لهم مثلا أصحاب القرية إذ جاء المرسلون إذا أرسلنا إليهم اثنين فكذبوهما فألززنا بثالثا فقالوا إنا إليكم مرسلون قالوا ما أنتم إلا بشر مثلنا وما أنزل الرحمن من شيء إن أنتم إلا تقذبون قالوا ربنا يعلم إنا إليكم لمرسلون وما علينا إلا البلاغ المبين قالوا إنا تطيرنا بكم لئن لم تنتهوا لنرجمنكم وليمسنكم منا عذاب أليم قالوا طائركم معكم أن ذكرتم بل أنتم قوم مصرفون وجاء من أقصى المدينة رجل يسعى قال يا قوم اتبعوا المرسلين اتبعوا من لا يصلكم أجرا وهم مهتدون وما لي على أعبد الذي فطرني وإليه ترجعون أتخذوا من دونه آلهة إن يردن الرحمن بذر الله تغني عني شفاءتهم شيئا ولا ينقذون إني إذا لفي ضلال مبين إني آمنت بربكم فاسمعون قيل ادخل الجنة قال يا ليت قومي يعلمون بما غفر لي ربي وجعلني من المكرمين وما أنزلنا على قومه من بعده من جن من السماء وما كنا منزلين إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم خامدون يا حسرة على الإباد ما يأتيهم من رسول إلا كانوا به يستعزئون ألم يروا كم أهلكنا قبلهم من القرون أنهم إليهم لا يرجعون وإن كل لما جميع لدينا مهدرون وآية لهم, لهم الأرض الميتة أحييناها وأخرجنا منها همبا فمنه يأكلون وجعلنا فيها جنات من نخيل وأعناب وفجرنا فيها من الأيون ليأكلوا من ثمره وما أملت أيديهم أفلا يشكرون سبحان الذي خلق الأزواج كلها مما تنبت الأرض ومن أنفسهم ومما لا يعلمون وآية لهم الليل نسنخ منه النهار فإذا هم مظلمون والشمس تجري لمستقر لها ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم ولكم ركدرناه منازل حتى عادك الأرجون القديم للشمس ينبغي لها أن تدرك القمر ولا الليل سابق النهار وكل في فلك يسبحون وآية لهم أنا هملنا ذريتهم في الفلك المشهون وخلقنا لهم من مثله ما يركبون 
وإن نشأ نغركهم فلا صريخ لهم ولا هم ينقذون إلا رحمة منا ومتاعا إلهين وإذا قيل لهم متقوا ما بين أيديكم وما خلفكم لعلكم ترهمون وما تأتيهم من آية من آيات ربهم إلا كانوا عنها مؤردين وإذا قيل لهم أنفقوا مما رزقكم الله قال الذين كفروا للذين آمنوا أنسئموا من لو يشاء الله أتأمى إن أنتم إلا في ضلال مبين ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين ما ينظرون إلا صيحة واحدة تأخذهم وهم يخصمون فلا يستطيعون توسية ولا إلى أهلهم يرجعون ونفك في السور فإذا من الأجداث إلى ربهم ينسلون قالوا يا ويلنا من بعثنا من مرقدنا هذا ما وعد الرحمن وصدق المرسلون إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم جميع لدينا مهدرون فليوم لا تظلم النفس شيئا ولا ترزعون إلا ما كنتم تعملون إن أصحاب الجنة اليوم في شغل فاكهون هم وأزواجهم في ظلال على الأرائك متقون لهم فيها فاكهة ولهم ما يدعون سلام قولا من رب الرحيم وامتاز اليوم أيها المجرمون ألم أحد إليكم يا بني آدم ألا تعبد الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين وعن أبدوني هذا صراط مستقيم ولقد أدل منكم جبلا كثيرا أفلم تكونوا تعقلون هذه جهنم التي كنتم توعدون إسلوها اليوم بما كنتم تكفرون اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون ولو نشاء لتمسنا على أعينهم فاستبقوا الصراط فعنا يبصرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مذيع ولا يرجئون ومن نؤمره ننكس في الخلق أفلا يعقلون وما علمناه الشعر وما ينبغي له إن هو إلا ذكر وقرآن مبين لينذر من كان حيا ويحق القول على الكافرين أولم يروا أنا خلقنا لهم مما أملت أيدينا أنا آمن فهم لها مالكون وذلناها لهم فمنها ركوبهم ومنها يعكلون ولهم فيها منافع مشارب أفلا يشكلون واتخذوا من دون الله آلهة لألهم ينسرون لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جن مهدرون فلا يحزن كقولهم إنا نعلم ما يسرون وما يؤلنون أولم يرى الإنسان أنا خلقناه من نطفة فإذا أخوة خسيم مبين وضرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقه قال من يهي الإذام وهي رميم قل يهيها الذي أنشاها أول مرة وهو بكل خلق عليم الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا فإذا أنتم منه توقدون أوليس الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بقادر ألا أن يخلق مثلهم بلى وهو الخلاق العليم إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد
اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم إني أسألك وتوجه إليك بنبيك نبي الرحمة محمد صلى الله عليه وآله يا أبا القاسم يا رسول الله يا إمام الرحمة يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيها عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا وجيها عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا أبا الحسن يا أمير المؤمنين يا علي بن أبي طالب يا حجة الله على خلقي يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيها عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا وجيها عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا فاطمة الزهراء يا بنت محمد يا قرة عين الرسول يا سيدتنا ومولاتنا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهة عند الله اشفعي لنا عند الله يا وجيهة عند الله اشفعي لنا عند الله يا أبا محمد يا حسن بن علي أيها المجتبى يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيها عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا وجيها عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا أبا عبد الله يا حسين بن علي أيها الشهيد يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقي يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا 
يا وجيهان عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا وجيهان عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا أبا الحسن يا علي بن الحسين يا زين العابدين يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهان عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا وجيهان عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا أبا جعفر يا محمد بن علي أيها الباقر يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهان عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا وجيهان عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا أبا عبد الله يا جعفر بن محمد أيها الصادق يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهان عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا وجيهان عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا أبا الحسن يا موسى بن جعفر أيها الكاظم يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهان عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا وجيهان عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا أبا الحسن يا علي يا ابن موسى أيها الرضا يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهان عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا وجيهان عند الله 
اشفع لنا عند الله يا أبا جعفر يا محمد بن علي أيها التقي الجواد يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيها عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا وجيها عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا أبا الحسن يا علي بن محمد أيها الهادي النقي يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيها عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا وجيها عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا أبا محمد يا حسن بن علي أيها الزكي العسكري يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيها عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا وجيها عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا وصي الحسن والخلف الحجة أيها القائم المنتظر المهدي يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيها عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا وجيها عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا سادتي وموالي إني توجهت بكم أئمتي وعدتي يومي فقري وحاجتي إلى الله وتوسلت بكم إلى الله واستشفعت بكم إلى الله فاشفعوا لي عند الله واستنقذوني من ذنوبي عند الله فإنكم وسيلتي إلى الله وبحبكم وبقربكم أرجو نجاة من الله فكونوا عند الله رجائي يا سادتي يا أولياء الله صلى الله عليهم أجمعين 
ولعن الله أعضاء الله ظالميهم من الأولين والآخرين آمين رب العالمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Welcome to this brief discussion around a quick review for the fiqh masail for the holy month of Ramadan Well it's true that we do have these conversations every year but as Ramadan does the holy month of Ramadan does come once a year it's important that we take the time, do a review, recap some of the masail, make sure that we're clear on some of the issues pertaining to the holy month to ensure that we make the best of this month and fulfill our obligations. Very briefly, there's about three or four areas that we'll address. I've made some notes that you can follow along in the conversation uh, so that we can move along with the topic clearly, inshallah. First and foremost, when we talk about the holy month of Ramadan, we want to talk about the intention of fasting that we make in this month. As with every action that we perform, every act of worship, there is an intention or a niya that has to be prepared for the action and that we must be conscious of that niya when we are performing our a'mal for the sake of Allah. Now, one of the things about this month of the holy month of Ramadan is, is that we can make our intention at the beginning of the month and making it once at the beginning of the month is sufficient to suffice for us the entire month. We don't have to go through the process of making it daily. The intention doesn't have to be something verbal or physical that passes through our mind. For example, I don't have to make the intention that I will be fasting for 30 days or 29 days for the holy month of Ramadan, Qurbatan uh, illallah. Nor do I have to make this intention in my mind where I think about this exact statement and finish with Qurbatan illallah. It has to more be the consciousness that if I am avoiding something in this month, it is for the sake of Allah. If I am performing an action, it is for the sake of Allah. The one who motivates me to behave in this way is Allah. I'm not abstaining from food because it's a diet. I'm not abstaining from food because it's a challenge. I'm not keeping away from drinking because I want to show people that I don't need water and I can still fast during the day. My intention and my niyat is that this is for the pleasure of Allah. And that niyyah needs to be present in my mind and in my heart. And when it's present there, that's sufficient without having to make the statement outright. If I choose that I want to make the intention daily, that every day I will make the intention to be fasting, my intention for fasting has to be completed before the start of the fast, which is the time of Fajr. So before the time of Fajr sets in, my intention has been made, I'm clear about what I'm doing on this day before the day begins, I know what my goal to achieve on this day is for the sake of Allah, that I will be abstaining from all of these items that Allah has forbidden. The beauty of fasting, while the wajibat are the a'mal that we perform of the furu' ad-deen, many of them are, all of them are associated with action, except the act of fasting, which is associated with the absence of action. It's a forbiddance of action. And the same way that we forbid an action or we don't perform an action or we refuse to perform an action, it must be done for a reason. It can't be done carelessly. It can't be done for alternate reasons. It has to be done for one and one reason only, and that is for the sake of Allah. Now, if it happens that I overslept and I didn't make my intention before the time of Fajr, as long as I'm awake before Dhuhr, I can make my intention and the fast for the day counts. Now, if, for example, I didn't make my intention at night, and I was going to intending to do it before Fajr and I overslept and I overslept past the time of Dhuhr, then at this point in time, if I haven't made my intention for fasting, I should still continue to fast for this day and offer the qadha of this day as well too, since my intention was made after the time of Dhuhr. So these become an important action of understanding that the best is, is that we make the intention at the start of the month However, we do have the freedom to fast and make the intention on a daily basis that I will be fasting. One of the beauties of the month of Ramadan is it's known as a amal al-murakkab or a murakkab action or a compound action. Let me explain what this means. 
the month of Ramadan is what we've been commanded to fast, not the days of Ramadan. Now, the same way that, for example, when I go to pray, a prayer is a compound action that composes of qiyam, ruku, sujood, qira'at, tashahud, salam. I can't choose that, okay, fine, I'm just going to perform tashahud today. I'm not going to perform qiyam, for example. Or today I will only do ruku. We would say that this action is useless. It doesn't mean anything. Because the action that Allah demanded is not one ruku or two rukus or four rukus. He demanded the picture of salat in its entirety. And that's our responsibility to offer him that entire salat. The same is true of the month of Ramadan. That Allah has commanded us to fast this entire month. So we have to offer all of these days before him. Which is why it's possible to make one intention at the start of the month. And that the intention lasts us the entire month. Because Allah has commanded us to fast this whole month. And our goal is to be subservient to Allah and to fulfill his commands. So we fast the entire month. This beauty of Ramadan being a compound and being a, 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 a complete series of fasts is an important way for us to look at and understand the beauty of our responsibility in this month is the submission to the will of Allah on a complete basis. And that's important for us to learn. Now, one of the questions that comes up as well, too, that's important to think about is what time does our fast start and what time does our fast end? To understand this command, we can look directly at the Qur'an in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 187, of which I've shared an excerpt with you where Allah says, وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخِيَةِ الْعَبْيَضُ مِنْ خِيَةِ الْأَسْوَدِي مِنَ الْفَجْرِ ثُمَّ عَتِمُّ السِّيَامَ إِلَى الْلَيْلِ that this Allah is giving us the prescription of the time in which fasting is due. Where Allah says, you are allowed to eat and drink, and eat and drink, until the white thread becomes apparent to you, or you can tell the difference between the white thread and the black thread. Now, this white thread and black thread, there are different ways in which the translations have been done. The translation reference for you in the screen comes from uh, Ali Kulli Qara'i, where he says that the uh, white streak becomes manifest from the dark streak. Uh, others say where the darkness of night, uh, the, uh, the light of day becomes apparent from the darkness of night. Traditionally, what this refers to is the idea that if I was to hold two pieces of thread in my hand, one made of black thread, one made of white thread, at a time in the darkness where I can now begin to tell the difference between which thread is black and which thread is white, that is the time that the fast begins. That is the time of Fajr. The time of dawn comes at this moment in time. For us, the command of fasting is, is that our fast should begin from the time of dawn until it becomes Siyam ila layl, until night. Now, Maghrib is the time at sunset from which the redness uh, overhead has now disappeared. This is the difference between the time of Maghrib and the time of sunset. Sunset is where this, the circle of the sun has now set, but the light of the sun remains. The time of Maghrib is when the light of the sun has disappeared, and now that the redness may still be on the horizon, but that overhead, this light of the day has gone from us. In this way, we see that night is our restriction based upon the words of the Qur'an, not sunset, that we have to wait for when our fast ends. This differentiates us from other sects of Islam that are satisfied that at sunset their obligation has been completed. However, when we return to the text of the Qur'an, we can find that Allah's command, Siyam ila layl is to say that we must wait for the night to come, and when the night comes, then our fast opens. So, as a recommended precaution, it's recommended that we start the fast a few minutes before Fajr, uh, which in many calendars that you use for the month of Ramadan will be referred to as Imsak. Imsak is a time period where we say we're still certain it's night, and sometime between this time of Imsak and the time of Fajr, true dawn will set in, but because of cities and light pollution and buildings, we can't tell that exact moment. So, therefore, we stop at the time of Imsak. And the same way, when it comes to Maghrib, we wait a few minutes extra to ensure that we've completed the task Allah has commanded us to in its entirety, and we haven't made a mistake by opening our fast too soon.
Similarly, we do similar actions like this even in wudu. When we wash our arms, Allah has commanded us to wash our arms until our elbows. But if you take a look at how our fuqaha have explained to us, they say always include washing your elbow. We include washing our elbow just in case if we were to miss a little bit, our wudu would be invalid. So we go a little bit extra and we include our elbow. The same is true of our fast. If Allah has commanded us from the second of dawn until the exact second of darkness that our fast should be completed between these two, we extend our fast a little bit in each direction just to be sure that we don't start too late or stop too early. So it's an important factor to pay attention to. Next, we want to talk about very briefly uh, traveling while in the state of fasting. Now, there are some questions that come up about the factor of traveling, and many of these questions are associated with the truth that fasting while traveling and traveling itself now has become much easier for us than it did in the past. And historically, traveling was a very time-taking, consuming, and difficult process on the basis of which we see that Allah to give us rest in this and to give us ease in this state has shortened our prayers and removed the obligation of fasting for us. However, just because it may contemporarily and currently be easier for us to fast while traveling, and we may assume that it's easy for everybody in this day and age to fast while traveling, we can't make that generalization. Islam is a religion that Allah prescribed for us 1400 years ago, and it will be valid for us until the day of judgment. And within that time period, many nations, many countries, many lifestyles are encompassed. The laws of Islam encompass all of these lifestyles. So while today it may be easy for us, we still have to follow the same regulations that were prescribed for all people. Accordingly, there's a famous narration quoted by one of the great teachers of the Hawza in his book on fiqh, uh, uh, Sheikh Bakir Irawani, where he narrates a hadith from Imam Jafar al-Sadiq saying that a man came to Imam Sadiq and said, Yabna Rasulullah, when I travel, I travel very quickly. For me to pass the distance where it is uh, required to pray qasr takes me maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes, because my horse is very fast and I travel frequently. So why should I then shorten my prayers when it's easy for me? Others, I understand it's difficult for them, but for me, it's nothing. Imam Sadiq replies to this man, who are you to decide not to take a gift that Allah has offered you? That becomes our guiding principle in understanding the fundamental behind fasting while traveling. Though it may seem easy to us, it may seem like it's a very convenient process. The fact that we don't have to fast or we are not required to fast while traveling is from Allah to us. And who are we to turn away a gift from the master? So, accordingly, we look at these criterion and we understand that if I'm on a multiple day journey, during the time of which my prayers are qasr for me, I do not have the obligation to fast during that trip. In other ways, we do have trips that, for example, don't require me to pray qasr. Maybe, for example, I'm going to visit my parents' house, which is in a different country, or, for example, I have another house that is in a more convenient location to fast, and once I reach there, my prayers are full, then in this case, I am allowed to fast while I'm there because I do not have the obligation to shorten my prayers while I'm there. In the case that I leave on a journey, <clears throat> and I want to fast on that day, I have to reach my destination before the time of Dhuhr, or... I, ha I can leave for my journey after the time of Dhuhr. But at the exact moment that Dhuhr sets in, for my fast to be valid, I need to be in a location where I am obligated to pray four rakat for Salat al Dhuhr. So if my journey is short, I can leave before Fajr and come back home before Fajr. Or if my journey will take more time, I can leave after the time of Dhuhr. And at that point in time, I can complete my fast and that uh, my fast will be valid and there won't be any problem with it. But if I leave my house before the Dhuhr, let's say at 11 o'clock, and at the time that Dhuhr exactly sets in, I'm in a location where if I was to stand up to pray at that exact moment, I would not be obligated or I could not offer my prayers as full prayers and I have to shorten my prayers, then in that case, my fast at that moment is broken and I am not obligated to fast any further that day. Now, there's a few delicate points to note about this. Let's say, for example, I know that I will have to take a journey which at the time of Dhuhr, I will be 
uh, in a state of traveling and my fast will not be valid. In this case, it doesn't mean that I can start the day with a cup of coffee and I can just go about my day and say, well, I'm not going to be fasting today since I'll be traveling. No, I have to begin my fast as any normal day. And at that moment of dhuhr or at the moment when I've passed the distance of traveling that my prayers are now qasr, at that moment, my fast is no longer uh, an act that has to be completed. And at that moment, I can eat or drink. If I eat or drink before entering the condition of traveling and before being far enough away from my house at the time of dhuhr, I've broken my fast invalidly and I will have to pay a kafara for that action. So we have to make sure when we're traveling or we expect that we'll be traveling, I don't open my fast until I've actually passed the extent of traveling that would cause me to be unable to fast. And then I can open my fast. Now, if it happens that I'm traveling on a day during the month of Ramadan, first off, it is very highly recommended not to fast in the month of Ramadan. It's very highly recommended to stay away from fasting in this month so that we can complete the prescribed action of fasting for the whole month. But if I find myself in a condition that I have to travel, it's an obligation of work, it's an obligation of family responsibility, whatever that may be, that forces me to the action that I have to travel, I should not eat or drink like a normal day. It is from the disliked actions that in the month of Ramadan, a person, even if they are not fasting, they shouldn't treat it as if there is no sanctity of the day but rather that they should honor the sanctity of this month and not eat or eat very little or avoid those actions that would be from that which voids a fast. Speaking of which, let's talk briefly about the things which void our fasts. Eating and drinking intentionally. If someone accidentally eats or drinks something, their fast can still be valid and they can continue on their fast as long as there is no intention of performing this action. Sexual intercourse is something that will void our fast. Same with istimna, or what's referred to as masturbation, which is the excretion of fluids um, without a partner. <clears throat> the fourth point is ascribing uh, false things to Allah, the Prophet, our Prophet Muhammad, or the Masumin. Now, if you notice, I put an asterisk next to this because these are ahtiyat wujuban. It's an obligatory precaution that should a person ascribe a lie to the Allah, Prophet, or the Ahlul Bayt, that their fast will be void as an obligatory precaution and they will have to offer the kafara and make up the qadha of that fast. Now, when we talk about prescribe, ascribing a lie to Allah, the Prophet, and the Ahlul Bayt, this refers to the idea of one, let's say, for example, we quote a narration or a hadith or some attribute of Allah that we know to be false. Once we make that quotation and we say that the Prophet said this and he really didn't, that fast that we were offering is void because of the act that we attributed a lie to the Holy Prophet. Even if after I attribute this lie, I say, I was just joking, I was just joking, I wasn't serious. My fast is still void and I still have to offer the kafara. Even if I acknowledge that this was a lie, this wasn't true, we would say that the fast is still invalid. If it comes about that, for example, I'm unsure of a saying or I'm unsure of an attribute that is attributed to Allah and I want to narrate this condition, then I should do it in such a way that I don't take the credit for attributing it. I cite the source from which I'm saying that such and such person has narrated this and this incident about the Holy Prophet, the truth of which I don't know. That at this point in time, it's not me who's making a claim against the Prophet or against Allah or Ahlul Bayt but rather I am narrating the fact that someone else has made this claim that the Prophet has said this, or that this attribute of Allah is true or false, or that the Ahlul Bayt are such and such condition or quality. This way, by giving the source through which I am narrating the incident, I am no longer attributing a lie or a falsehood to Allah, the Prophet, or the Ahlul Bayt. So these become important aspects that we can pay attention to. Next thing that we take a look at, there's a few other, there's a total of eight different unique things which can void our fast. We've mentioned four, here are four other ones. Causing thick dust to reach the throat. Whether this is, for example, the dust of flour, the dust of soil, any of these actions can vo void our fast by letting them reach our throat, including the act of tobacco smoke or smoke from any, um, any, object that gives off fumes that we can smoke or otherwise to ingest those fumes or that dust that comes from them 
is one of the things that under obligatory precaution will void our fast. Remaining in a state of janaba, hayv, nifas until morning prayers. It happens at times that certain actions befall us that require us to perform ghusl to remove that condition from us. Any hadath al-akbar that befalls us that requires a ghusl to be done, we need to be able to perform that ghusl before the time of fajr so that the entire day of fast is presented in a state of purity. If I'm not in a state of purity uh, from hadath al-akbar, I cannot begin that fast and that becomes a problem for presenting our fast before Allah. So we have to ensure that if one happens to be in a state of janaba, hayd, or nifas that can be removed, it should be done before the start of fajr, otherwise the fast of that day will not be valid. Applying of a liquid enema uh, is adding something to the digestive tract, if not from the front end, from the other end, and that liquid is something that will void our fast and we can't do it. Vomiting intentionally is something that will void my fast. If I am, for example, uh, able to induce myself to a condition of vomiting, then in the case of that induction of vomiting, my voice fast will, will be voided. Even if it is to prevent myself from another sickness or to remove another substance from my body, I can do that action, but my fast will be voided by that action. Uh, it happens at time that, for example, something comes up in our throat we have like a little bit of reflux and something comes into our throat. If that reflux comes so high that it's in the back of my mouth, I have to spit it out. I can't swallow it back in. That's not considered vomiting, but it is something that has to be expelled. It can't be something that's been brought back in. The same is true, for example, if I have a post-nasal drip. That post-nasal drip, as long as it doesn't enter my oral cavity, doesn't enter my mouth, it's okay if it goes down the back of my throat. But if that post-nasal drip enters into my mouth, I have the obligation in the preservation of my fast to expel that substance, I can't take it back in. Especially if it's done consciously. If it's done unconsciously, there's no problem with it. It's okay, we can continue our fast. However, if it's done consciously that something came into my mouth and I didn't spit it out, that would be something that voids my fast. It happens at times that a person vomits unintentionally. That, for example, they start feeling unwell, they have some motion sickness, something causes them to indirectly be in a condition that they vomit. In this situation, it's not necessary for a person to prevent that vomit from coming out. For example, I became car sick and all of a sudden I have a strong urge to vomit. I don't have the obligation to stop that. I can let that vomit come out. I didn't induce that vomiting on purpose. And by that act of vomiting, my fast will not be voided. Now, if it happens that, for example, I'm not feeling well because of this and I feel sick because of this, then at that point in time, the breaking of a fast will not be uh, forced, but something that for the sake of safety, that it would be in that condition that I choose to open my fast. Otherwise, if the vomiting happens unintentionally, there's no problem with it. My fast can continue. Finally, some makru actions. When we offer a fast to Allah before Allah, we present the action of a fast, we want to do our best to ensure that we offer him and present before him the best action possible. As such, there are a few actions listed here that are important to mention that are not recommended to perform when we're in a state of fasting. So as to ensure that the fast that we present Allah is in the best of forms. Putting medication in the eyes is something that's recommended not to do. Uh, applying, for example, surma or, or, or kohol is something that is not recommended to do, especially if the smell reaches the back of the smell or the taste reaches the back of the throat. Giving blood or any other activity that causes physical weakness while fasting. One of the examples that's given of an action that causes physical we weakness is showering, uh, taking a bath, which for some elderly people may be a condition that happens that, for example, by taking a bath or taking a shower, they enter into a state of weakness. Therefore, that weakness that's brought on by this, because of that weakness, it's makru to perform that action. Same thing with giving blood. It may happen that my doctor wants to take a small vial of blood uh, for examinations when I go for my physical or I go to the doctor's office. And there's that's okay as long as the condition of weakness is not set on because of the giving of this blood. Putting medication in the nose. If I need to, for example, with allergy season this year probably being in full effect during the month of Ramadan, it's makru for me to use a nasal spray during the day. 
if that nasal spray happens to reach the back of my throat and go down my throat, that is ingestion of something and that is haram and that will void my fast. But even if I can ensure that my use of that nasal spray will stay locally only to my nose, the action still remains makru. Smelling aromatic plants, going out and intentionally putting your face close to plants and <sighs> taking in a big whiff of plants and aromatic plants that are out there is an action that is makru and better to be avoided when in a state of fasting. It won't void your fast, but it is something that is disliked while fasting. Using a suppository. Certain medications that can be taken as a suppository, while not haram in the state of fasting like in anima, are makru to be utilized during the state of fasting. Doing anything that causes bleeding in the mouth. A common question that comes up is, Molana, can we go to the dentist during the month of Ramadan? Well, it's not your first time going to the dentist. You have a pretty good idea if by the cleaning of the dentist or the work that the dentist does in the mouth, that will there be bleeding in your mouth? If there's bleeding in your mouth, it's a makru action. That doesn't mean that it's haram for you to go to the dentist. It just means that it's better that if you can reschedule for a time outside of the month of Ramadan, that may be something that's recommended for you to do. Immersing the entire head in water. Now this action is something that according to Sayyid al-Khu'i was one of the mubtalat as som that Sayyid al-Khu'i used to say that your fast is voided if you submerse your head entirely in water. In fact, there are a number of contemporary maraja who agree with this fact still and still say that immersing your head entirely in water will void your fast. However, by Sayyid Sistani, the act of immersing your head entirely in water is an action that is makru and it is not haram. However, in the case of preserving the image of our fast, we want to make sure that we avoid this action still. This has been just a quick overview of some of the ahkam and the facts. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. There are many resources that are now available, whether through myself, through the Risala Amaliya of Sayyidi Sistani that's available online, other ulama and other useful videos that have been put out on these and other similar topics to help ensure that our fasts in this month are accepted and that we use this month as a vehicle to attain piety and proximity to Allah. May Allah keep us on the upright path of Ali Muhammad and entitle us to the shifa in dunya and in akhirah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum ya Nabi Allah. السلام عليك يا أمير المؤمنين السلام عليك يا سيد الوصيين السلام عليك يا فاطمة الزهراء سيدة النساء العالمين السلام عليك يا حسن المجتبى السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله الحسين أيها الشهيد بكربلاء السلام على التسعة المعصومين من ذريتك علي ابن الحسين زين العابدين ومحمد ابن علي الباقر وجعفر ابن محمد الصادق وموسى ابن جعفر الكاظم وعلي ابن موسى الرضا ومحمد ابن علي التقي الجواد وعلي ابن محمد النقي الهادي والحسن ابن علي العسكري السلام عليك يا صاحب العسر والأمر والزمان السلام عليك يا خليفة الرحمن السلام عليك يا إمام الإنس والجان 
الامان 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 من فتنه الزمان عجل الله تعالى فرجك وسهل الله تعالى مخرجك وجعلنا من انصارك واعوانك ورحمه الله وبركاته